Now we're going to look at binary heaps, which is an ingenious and very simple data structure that's going to help us implement all the priority queue operations quickly. So the idea of a binary heap is based on the idea of a complete binary tree. So a complete binary tree, well, first of all, a binary tree is either empty or it's a node with links to left and right binary trees. So that's an example of a binary tree. A complete binary tree is one that's perfectly balanced except possibly for the bottom level. So there might be uh, a few nodes on the, on the bottom level and one level uh, lower than the bottom level, but otherwise all the levels are full. And we'll see how that looks in just a second. Uh, the property of a complete tree is that the height of a complete tree with n nodes is the biggest integer less than log base 2 of n. And that's really easy to convince yourself that that's true because the height, if we add nodes one at a time, uh, going from left to right on the bottom level, say, the height only increases when n is a power of 2. A uh, complete binary trees actually happen in nature. Uh, here's a, an example of uh, one that goes uh, one, two, three, four uh, levels at least. Uh, so 16 bushes at the end there. All right, now uh, the way we're going to use uh, complete binary trees to implement priority queues is uh, to, first of all, associate uh, information with each node. Uh, we'll put our keys in the nodes. Uh, and also, we're going to represent it uh, with an array. So uh, <coughs> when we start putting the keys in the nodes, uh, we're going to impose one more condition that's called heap ordering. And the idea is that the parent's key is going to be no smaller than its children's key. For, and that's true for every node in the tree. Uh, the array representation, all we do is we put, uh, we start with indices at 1. It's a little less calculation that way. We leave uh, A of 0 empty. Uh, and then we just take the nodes in level order. So first we put the root, then we put the two nodes on the first level going left from right, and then all the nodes on the third level going from left to right and so forth. Uh, this is interesting because we can draw the tree uh, to get more intuition about what's happening, but in the actual data structure representation, we don't need any links at all. It's just an array. The way that we move around the tree is by doing arithmetic on the indices. Uh, so let's look at a few properties of binary heaps. So that's complete binary tr uh, trees represented in an array with uh, keys in the nodes satisfying the heap order property. Well, first thing is that A of 1 is the largest key. Uh, it's larger than uh, the keys that his two children, and they're larger than theirs, and so forth. So it's the largest key uh, in the data structure. Uh, and the other thing is, as I just mentioned, you can use the array indices to move through the tree. For example, uh, if the node is at position k, index k in the array, then its parent is at k over 2. Uh, and that's the integer divide. So the parents of, say, h and g are both uh, n. Uh, h is ten, at 10, g is at 11, n is at 5. So both of those are uh, 10 over 2, 11 over 2, integer divide is 5. And going the other way, it's easy to see that the children of the node at k are 2k and 2k plus 1. So we don't need explicit links uh, at all to represent these data structures. We can just use array indices. So uh, <clears throat> that's the basic setup or the invariant that we want to maintain in this data structure. And now what we're going to do is take a look at uh, just a couple of different scenarios that, uh, where we violate that uh, invariant temporarily uh, and then fix it. And that's going to give us the flexibility that we need to implement priority queue operations. So one scenario shown here is uh, if, uh, for whatever reason, a child's key becomes larger than its parent's key. So in this case, uh, we have an example where uh, T, the node T here, its value changes and it becomes larger than its parent key uh, uh, P. So uh, the heap order condition is satisfied everywhere except at this node. Well, it's easy to fix this one. Uh, all we do is exchange the key in the child uh, with the key in the parent. 
After that exchange, then uh, we, that would have T up here and P down here, then the heap order condition is satisfied at that node because uh, the parent was smaller, so that one's smaller. Uh, and the southern is still smaller, so T is, uh, after it's exchanged up here, will be bigger than both its children. But the heap condition will be violated because T is still smaller than S. So we have to do it again, exchange it with S. So we move up the tree, exchanging the larger key with its smaller parent until we get to a point where it's larger than both its children. That's uh, restoring uh, the heap order along a path from uh, the place where it's violated to the root. Uh, you can think of that as kind of like the well-known Peter principle uh, where uh, a node gets promoted to a level where uh, it finally can't be better than, uh, than its boss. It's a level of its maximum incompetence. Uh, and implementing that in code is really easy. We call that the swim operation. It swims up to the top. Uh, and if we have a node uh, at index k and we know the heap condition is violated there, uh, as long as we're not at the root and uh, k's parent, k over 2, uh, is uh, less than uh, a of k, then uh, we just exchange it with its parent and move up. Uh, that's the swim operation to uh, eliminate a violation when a key value increases. <clears throat> so, for example, uh, this gives us a way to insert a new element into a heap. What we do is we add a, a new node at the end of the heap. So that's one position over. The thing is, remember, represented in array, one, two, three, and so forth. So the <coughs> next empty position in the array, uh, there's a place to put a new node. And then we just declare that that's part of the heap. Uh, and that node, well, if it's less than its parent, we're fine. Uh, but in general, we have to check whether the heap condition is violated and exchange it with this parent as long as it's smaller. And that's just perform the swim operation. So if n is the number of items in the heap defined to be in the heap, uh, we're going to increment it, uh, store our new key there, there, and then perform the swim operation. Uh, so that's a quick implementation of the insert operation. And notice, since it's just going from bottom to top in the heap, it takes at most uh, 1 plus log base 2 of n compares. <clears throat> now there's another scenario where a key becomes smaller. For, for whatever reason, a parent becomes, key uh, decreases, it might become smaller than one or both of its children's. In this case, uh, the value uh, at position 2 has changed to h uh, for whatever reason. Uh, and that's smaller, in this case, than both its children. So how do we fix that violation? Well, that one's also easy. We figure out which of the children is larger. In this case, it's the s. And we exchange, our, uh, exchange that one with the one that's violating the condition. So that's moving the smaller key down. After that exchange, then S uh, is in position 2, and it's bigger than both P and H, and the heap condition is only violated, again, where H is sitting. And again, we keep going until getting to the bottom or getting to a place where both children are smaller. Uh, and that's uh, maybe a little bit what happens when a, a new boss is hired from the outside. Uh, and then the two subordinates uh, struggle to take over that position, and then the boss, boss would get demoted to uh, its level of uh, competence. Uh, and again, that level of fl flexibility. Here's the implementation of it. Uh, and again, it's quite straightforward uh, using the uh, <coughs> index arithmetic to move around in the heap. Uh, if we're, and that's called the sync operation because we're going down in the heap. If we're at position k, then what we need to worry about is the nodes at 2k and 2k plus 1. Uh, and the first thing to check is uh, find out which one's bigger. Uh, it's either 2k or 2k plus 1, and so set j accordingly. So that's j now, is, after this statement, is the larger of the two children. Uh, and don't forget to check uh, that we're going off the end of the heap. Uh, and then if uh, <coughs> the uh, k is uh, not less than either one of those, then uh, we're done. Uh, if it is, then we exchange with the larger of the two children and move down the heap. Again, just a few lines of code to eliminate the violation when a key value in a heap decreases. And that one we're going to use to implement delete the maximum in a heap. 
So to delete the maximum, we have to do two things. One thing is the, thing, the size of the heap has got to go down by one. Uh, the other thing is return the maximum. Well, we know the, the uh, <coughs> one that we want to uh, return uh, is the one at the root, so uh, we'll uh, save that value away to uh, return to the client. Uh, and then, since it has to go down by one, uh, the place to get the, uh, to re remove the element from the heap is at the end of the array, because it's now going to have to not occupy that position. So we take that element and replace the root with it. So move the h up, uh, and actually uh, put the root value there, just exchange them, but it's no longer in the heap. Uh, now, that element, uh, which went from the bottom to the top, is, is most likely going to violate the heap order. It's going to be smaller than one of its, both of its children, uh, so uh, we do a sync. Uh, <coughs> now, uh, in this case, to implement delete max, we save away that value at the root in max, uh, and we uh, eliminate loitering by nulling out uh, that vacated position, uh, then return the max value. So that's an implement, implementation of the delete max operation uh, for a uh, heap using uh, sync, uh, where a key value that decreases go down, goes down in the heap. Uh, so uh, let's uh, just take a look at what happens with uh, a real heap with the demo when we do these things. Uh, and you'll have a good feeling for uh, how uh, this data structure works. Uh, so we, uh, we're starting at some point where uh, we have uh, uh, these uh, 10 keys in uh, a heap, and it's heap ordered. Uh, so we've drawn the data structure with the links, so we have an intuition uh, for what's going on. But all the program sees is the array in gray at the bottom, where T is in position 1, P and R, position 2 and 3, and so forth. So now suppose that we're supposed to add S. So to add it to the heap, that's going to go in the position at the end. Uh, and then now we've added it to the heap by just incrementing N and putting it in there. Uh, but now we have to uh, bring the heap order back into condition. And so that's going to, now that key uh, is larger than its parent, so we're going to uh, swim it up, uh, exchange it with its parent as long as it's smaller than its parent. So first thing it goes up uh, to exchange with the S, it's still bigger than P, so we exchange it with the P. Uh, and now uh, we're done because the S is not bigger than T, and the heap order condition uh, is now satisfied everywhere in the heap. So with just two exchanges, we insert that new element into the heap in this case. Uh, now suppose the next operation is remove the maximum. So we're going to take T, and we're going to exchange it with the last element. Uh, and then declare that to be no longer part of the heap. Uh, so now uh, <coughs> we have uh, to uh, bring the heap order back uh, because it might be violated at the root. So now we invoke the sync where we exchange that node with the larger of its two children until we find a place where it's larger than both its children. Uh, so S is the larger of the two children, R and S, and now uh, H is still smaller than both its children, so we promote the larger, which is P. Uh, now H has no right child, just a left child, and it's larger than that one, so uh, we're finished with that operation. We've removed the maximum, uh, and we still have uh, our data structure heap ordered uh, and our N keys stored in the first N positions in the array. Uh, let's remove the maximum again. Uh, again, we take it out by exchanging uh, this time G with the root, uh, and then uh, <coughs> decrease the size of the heap by one. Just take that out. Now the node at the root uh, violates the heap order, so we have to exchange it with the largest of its two children. In this case, that's R. Uh, again, uh, G is not larger than its two children, so we have to exchange it with the larger of the two, that's O. Uh, and now we're done. We've removed the largest again. Uh, now suppose we insert S back into the heap. Uh, so uh, <coughs> that's uh, adding it at the end, violates the heap order, uh, exchange it with uh, the uh, parent who's smaller, uh, and keep doing until we get to a place where uh, it's larger than its two children. In this case, S goes all the way up to the root, and it, uh, it's all heap ordered again. So that's a little survey of some operations uh, on a heap, and you can see how every operation is done with uh, just a few exchanges along the path from the bottom to the top, or the top to the bottom.
Okay, here's the complete uh, Java implementation of a priority queue using the binary heap data structure. Uh, <clears throat> it's actually not so different from the elementary implementations that we looked at in the last section. Our representation is an array of keys uh, and a size. That's the number of items in the heap. Uh, <clears throat> for simplicity, uh, we'll show the code where the client gives the capacity of the heap. Uh, we can use a resizing array uh, in an industrial strength implementation, the same that uh, we did for stacks and other data structures where we use arrays. Uh, so we'll build uh, a new array of keys, and we have to use an ugly, ugly cast because we can't have generic arrays in Java. Uh, and that, So it's comparable, and, and we need one more that can, than the capacity to handle this thing where uh, we don't use position zero. So the priority queue operations uh, is the insert in Dell Max that uh, we just showed in the previous slides. Uh, is empty is just checking whether uh, n is equal to zero. Uh, we have the swim and sync functions uh, that we showed earlier. And then we have helper functions, less and exchange, uh, that access the uh, array directly so that the code doesn't have to access them directly. Uh, that's a complete implementation of uh, priority queues in Java. Uh, and this, is, this implementation by itself is uh, extremely significant because uh, it's really very simple, uh, optimal representation of the data, and only a little arithmetic with array indices. But as you can see by looking at this table, it gives us a way to implement priority queues where uh, both operations are guaranteed to happen in log n time. Now, experts have uh, worked to come up with improvements uh, on this, and there are uh, slight improvements possible. Uh, we can make the heap D-way rather than just two-way, uh, and depending on the frequency of uh, execution of the insert and del max operations, uh, that might work out better. Uh, there's an ad advanced data structure called a Fibonacci heap where inserts are done in constant time and del delete max done in uh, log n time uh, on average over uh, all the operations. But that one's generally too complicated to use in practice. Uh, but still, again, using theory as a guide, uh, maybe there's a way to, uh, <coughs> to decrease costs a little bit from binary heaps. Uh, and of course, we cannot get down to having constant time for all operations. Why? Well, we can sort with a heap uh, by inserting all the elements uh, and then deleting the maximum and getting a sort done. Uh, and that would be linear time if we had this kind of uh, variation, if, if we had constant time operations for both insert and del max. But for certain applications, we can get close to constant time for one of the other uh, operations, uh, and that'll be useful in different uh, implementations. Now, there's an important consideration uh, that, uh, in, uh, that we have to bring up related to the programming language. Uh, and <coughs> this is uh, uh, a more general consideration than uh, usually we, we bring into focus in algorithms, uh, but it's worthwhile mentioning. Uh, we're assuming that the client doesn't get to change the keys while they're on the priority queue. Uh, and it's better not to assume that. Uh, it's better to arrange for that in our implementations by using keys that are immutable, whose values don't change. Uh, there's many reasons that immu immutable keys uh, are, uh, <coughs> that programming languages provide the capability uh, to build immutable keys, and, and this is a, a fine example of one. Uh, so, uh, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, the other things that, that uh, we didn't talk about in the implementation uh, should throw an uh, exception if the client tries to delete from an empty priority queue. Uh, and we should have a no argument constructor and use a resizing array uh, to uh, account for uh, gradual growth and shrinkage uh, in an industrial strength uh, implementation. Uh, and usually we provide two implementations, one that's max-oriented, one that's min-oriented, so that uh, nobody gets confused and they're the same except uh, less and greater switched. Uh, and uh, we'll see later on there's times when we want to add, uh, expand the API and provide other operations like removing an arbitrary, arbitrary item from the priority queue or give the client in the API the capability of changing the priority of an item. 
our sink and swim methods are good for making this happen, uh, but we'll uh, uh, delay uh, these implementations uh, until we need them in a more complicated algorithm. So what about immutability? Uh, uh, so uh, in every uh, thing in Java is implemented as a data type, a set of values and operations on those values. And the idea of a mutable data type is you can't change the value once it's created. Um, so that's kind of like when you, uh, <coughs> when, you, when you create a literal value to be assigned to an integer, it, it has that value. Uh, so uh, here, here's an example, uh, say, uh, using the uh, a data type for vectors. Uh, it might be a way to implement vectors. So we put the word final uh, to means that uh, the instance methods can't be uh, overridden. And not only that, uh, instance variables are private. They can't be seen from the outside, uh, and they don't change. Uh, and so a constructor for an immutable vector data type uh, it might take uh, an array uh, <clears throat> as its argument, uh, and that array has got values stored in it, say of doubles, and those are uh, those can change. Uh, but what an immutable implementation would do would be to copy uh, those values into the local uh, <coughs> data array instance variable. Uh, and then uh, those values are not going to change. And the instance methods won't change them, and the client can't change them. Uh, so uh, that value stays the same. Uh, lots of uh, implementations, uh, data type implementations in Java uh, are immutable, like string is immutable. When you create a string, that value doesn't change. Uh, <clears throat> if you want a new string, uh, you have to create a new string uh, using concatenation or some other operation. And the same with the wrapper types like integer and double or color uh, and uh, lots of things. Uh, whereas, uh, on the other hand, uh, sometimes uh, the whole purpose uh, of a data type is to maintain a changing value, uh, like a good example is a counter <laughs> or a stack. Uh, so you wouldn't put those things uh, on a priority queue because the value is changing, but the other ones uh, you would. Uh, so uh, the advantages of immutability, and again, maybe this isn't uh, the place to really sell those advantages, uh, it's more for a programming language course, uh, is that it, it really simplifies debugging. Uh, we, we can be, uh, uh, have more confidence that our priority queue operations are going to work correctly uh, if we know that the type of data that's on the priority queue is immutable. If the client could change the values, how do we know that the heap order operation is preserved? If we want the client to be able to change the values, we're going to provide methods for that purpose, uh, as I just mentioned. Uh, and there's uh, many other reasons that people use uh, immutable data types. Uh, there is a, a disadvantage that you have to create a new object for every uh, data type value, but for uh, a lot of applications, that disadvantage is not viewed to be significant compared to the advantages. Uh, here's a quote uh, from uh, a, uh, one of Java's architect, Josh Block. Mm. Classes should be immutable unless there's a very good reason to make them mutable. If a class cannot be made immutable, you should still limit its mutability as much as possible. Uh, and many programmers uh, live by that kind of precept. So that's a basic uh, implementation of priority queues using the uh, he heap uh, data structure represented as an array. Uh, 